Welcome back to another episode. Welcome to another episode of the Corporate Cowboys Podcast. Welcome to the Corporate War. Today's proof of life is Wednesday, December 21, 2022. And um, back at you with another little 30 minute consult. Hopefully, you can take away some goodness from this episode, apply it to your life if you need it. And if you don't, share the corporate love to somebody you know, to an associate, somebody close to them, the same wavelength. And if not, name drop me. Name drop me. In passing, just be casual about it. Say, yeah, I've been listening to a a self-improvement, a self-help, a professional development podcast. My name is Alex. So for the next 30 minutes, you are mine. If I speak too slow, you can speed it up to 1.25 times, one and a half times. I mean, that's at your discretion, is it not? Today, we get we got a question from r slash uh, career guidance, and they're asking for advice. Now, right off top, I see it says something about a trigger warning, a trigger warning about S-U-I-C-I-D-E, <clears throat> and I don't know if I want to really say that on the podcast. I don't know whether or not it'll get censored. Who knows, right? But if I say it uh, like a side of suey, right? <laughs> a side of suey, well, then you piece that together. It's pretty much unaliving oneself, right? Now, this this post, I don't, I'm pretty sure is not about planning to, but the question necessarily asks, what do I do with my useless bachelor's degree? And that, to me, already strikes a chord. Strikes a chord because I know folks who are on a path of no return, who are past the point of no return. They are on a road to perdition, if you will. And it's tough. It's fucking tough having to watch folks that you know, folks that you might consider acquaintances, close acquaintances, friends even. Your associates, I don't know if you would associate with them, but acquaintances nonetheless go down a path that they will not be able to dig themselves out of. So it becomes really more of a hole, more of a grave, and it's lined with debt, with student debt. Let me read you the body to this. And it's saying, I got my bachelor's degree in computer programming and information systems, but I absolutely hated computers. Absolutely hated computers. Okay, right off bat, (laughs) why, why get a bachelor's in computer programming if they already hated computers? You see, I didn't get into the law having hated the law. No, 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 no. There are, Maybe there might be individuals, certain practitioners that you might not have a um, amicable, a positive affinity for or good goodwill towards. But I didn't hate the law, right? As a professional, as a legal professional myself, the law is a lovely thing. Why? Because it opens so many doors. And even if doors closes, it wedges open so many windows. It pries open a lot of of boxes that otherwise one might not have access to. But I digress. It says here, I tried to quit multiple times, but everyone kept telling me not to. (laughs) So everybody just told you don't quit? Man, instead of, uh, I mean, I guess in that sense, it's still your fault. 
at the end of the day because you should go with you should go with an interest an interest that you like and if that interest makes you money then you don't necessarily have to like it but be interested in the ends treat it as a means to an ends and for all we know this person maybe hasn't had a day having to program computers but the day they start it maybe they do fall in love with the work right because it's a means to an end granted granted they did put themselves through uh, this form of education i don't know if they got loans or i don't know if they got scholarships but they've already progressed down this path and got a degree for it but Having hated it really might just be a reflection of how you learned it. Think on that. How you hated it might be a reflection of how you learned it. It could be that before you started your degree, you had an interest and you, and you liked computers. You liked what they could do. They were a means to an end. And that end might have been at that point. I don't know, satisfaction. If you weren't necessarily making money from them, maybe you uh, lived at home and just toyed around with your basic electronics, computers and whatnot. That might've been an interest of yours, but then having been put through a, a certain uh, curriculum, now it doesn't, have that same appeal it once did and now you fucking hate them but it says here you hated them in the past so i tried to quit multiple times but everyone kept telling me not to i listened up until the points of no return when i thought i would end my life before i finished the degree i fought to appeal my grade for mental health reasons and now i don't know what to do with this stupid piece of paper it's no one's fault but mine, really, because I listened to the wrong people. I let someone else choose my degree and control my life. For the past couple of months, I've been struggling to find a job that pays well. Anytime I search jobs related to my major, I panic. The lack of options is taking a huge toll on me. I feel like a mouse on a glue trap. Damn, that's pretty imaginative. <laughs> I'm never getting out. Working on a computer is hell. I don't know how to code and I can't learn. It's not just a mental block. I hate it. <laughs> Yo. If I laugh, if I laugh, it's because I'm on the outside. Obviously, I don't know what this person is going through. I cannot relate. I do not empathize. Or is it sympathize? I do not sympathize. Yeah, I don't sympathize. I might empathize, right? I do not sympathize because I haven't been in that position, in a similar position. What I can do, being an outsider, looking into this person's situation, it's... It's like when you're in a box, right? It's like when you're digging a hole, right? You don't know what the fuck is going on outside of the box, outside of this hole. And if you and if you sit in it long enough, it's as if the box becomes your world. It's as if the hole that you dig becomes all that you know. And everything else that happens around you is a secondary, is passing you by, right? Which is, why, which is why this person, which is why this person who now says that they hate it and they can't learn it, they're stuck at the bottom of their hole right now. I think this is, this ought to be rock bottom, right? If they're having some type of ideation of ending it all, one might count this as being rock bottom. But how do you get away from it, right? Well, the issue is the issue is that they didn't list any actual interests that they have. 
I appreciate and I love when folks include enough context for us to go on. But on its face, we don't have this. If I had this person as a client in front of me, a paying client, right, I would take my time, ask the right questions because it's apparent they still want to use, they still want to do something with this bachelor's degree, but they're calling it useless. They're outright discounting it. They've put themselves through a program, whether, whether they wanted to or not, because bear in mind, they wanted to stop and yet they were pushed to continue and pushed to finish. So they received a degree. They have a working degree. So it's not just that they want to be gone, that they don't want to be here, that they want to uh, stop living. No, no. They want to do something. They want to figure a way out from the hole that they've dug. It's like they've recognized they're in a hole. It's the point of no return. It's like they're pointed downward into the earth. And they want to find a way to turn around, to turn the fuck around. But now... Now they've got to work against gravity, right? If you imagine somebody who had dug straight down, now you can't dig up. You can only turn around and continue digging. It's going to be sideways, laterally, diagonally, but you have to dig out. You cannot dig up. You can only dig out. So... Even though this appears to be rock bottom, this person's work is not over. It's not over just because they want to end it all. Nobody's going to come down and save them. They're in their own hole. They necessarily made their own bed because they followed somebody else's direction. They didn't put their interests. I don't mean their personal interests. They didn't put their professional interests ahead of other people's opinions. Now what they're seeking is a professional opinion. They're seeking an opinion that might help them on their own path, on their own professional path. They're suffering. I get it. They're struggling. I understand. Do I sympathize? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. A lot of us, many of us have been in that position before. We can empathize. We could be like, damn, well, I want to be sure. That this person is willing to work. That's why I, I, I can't feel the pity. Like, yeah, I feel bad that you're in a situation, but at the same time, I, uh, Maybe I have that backwards. Maybe I, I do sympathize. Maybe I pity this person, but I can't empathize as feeling the same way. Right? Where if I had to put myself in their shoes, that's empathy. That's having empathy, right? Now, I can, I can, I can picture dead ends. <laughs> I can picture dead ends, and when, when uh, options appear minimal and uh, outcomes appear bleak and dark, I've been in those situations. Now. I can't uh, I can't claim that I've actually thought through ideation, right? I mean that I that I haven't, right? But you get to a point where you realize that it doesn't solve anything. It doesn't. I mean, our purpose is greater. Our vision is grander. It's not grandeur, right? I mean, even though the vision is great, 
It's for the improvement of uh, of business overall, right? And how will unaliving yourself solve any of that? It just takes takes one one brief moment, a thought, and recognizing that though it appears that you're at a dead end, though it appears that you have a useless bachelor's degree. There is always another option. There's always another avenue. There's always another angle. What you have to learn is is how to hustle. How to hustle. And as a hustler, well, obviously I've I've never gone through with uh, plans to terminate myself, right? It sounds funny saying it like that. It's like, I'm self-employed, and if I terminate myself, the fuck do I have left, right? <laughs> what the fuck do I leave behind? If I terminate, if I choose to terminate myself, what do I leave behind? What have I got left? Nothing. Nothing. You leave behind a fucking mess, literally. <laughs> so you don't. I mean, our job is never finished. Our work is never done. So having this client in a face-to-face, in a one-to-one, I'm, I am no mental counselor, right? But it's our belief, it's our belief that your professional aspirations, your efforts towards professionalism, your professional development can and does influence your personal well-being. And that touches on fulfillment, that touches on satisfaction, that touches on happiness, that touches on pleasure even, that touches on self-actualization of an individual, of a professional. We're humans after all. We strive for greatness, each and every one of us. Now, I can only speak to males to men, to male men. (laughs) And whoever listens to this message toward male men, right? You wanna act the part, you gotta play the part. It's welcome to corporate. It's welcome to corporate, baby girl. And if you wanna run in corporate, you've got to learn how to play in corporate. The first step is learning to hustle. I don't know this person's age. I don't know what this person's uh, aptitudes for social interaction are. I don't know how outgoing they are. As a as a client, I would walk them through these steps and evaluate them thoroughly before providing a recommendation, a personal recommendation, a personalized something tailored to them. Otherwise, best I could do is provide a General advice, just general advice. And again, these come back to the principles of business, to the principles of professionalism. You've got to know how to sell what it is you know how to do or what it is you know how to make, how to sell it, how to market it, how to hustle it. I mean, if we're talking street business, you have to be a hustler. You have to know how to hustle what it is that you know how to do. Otherwise, you're going to, if you go into this, treating your degree as useless, how do you expect to market a useless degree? I mean, if you have additional interests, which is something we would ask about, How can you tie those interests into programming? How can you tie those interests into information systems, right? Now, those fields, 
I don't know if it's just uh, if it's analytics or if it's engineering. Sounds like it's more on the engineering side, but if you hate computer, if you hate computers so much, uh, I don't know. I I really dislike the usage of love and hate. Those two terms. I feel like hate is a is a strong word. Love is a strong word also, and frankly, they're both overused, right? Maybe when I'm speaking to you know, just the lay person, just your basic average Joe person, love and hate is enough, right? But love and hate, when you think about it, are two very strong emotions. And I think when you tie up love and hate into what you do, I feel like hate is enough to not do it. And if you already hated computers, you fucked up. You fucked up. Now at this age, you've got a couple of options. And here's where I'm going to be a little tough. A little tough love for you. You can start the fuck over. <laughs> option, option Z, I'll leave for the end. And we ain't going to get there. I hope you don't get there. If you know what I'm saying. Option Z. But... Option A, you can start the fuck over in education and doing something that you want to do. If if education is all you know, if education is what you want to do. You really, really hated computers, even though everybody's fucking using them. You're on your phone. You got on your computer to bitch about your useless degree. <laughs> you can start over in school and do something you are interested in, pursue something else. Now, the only reason I put that out there is because I'm thinking. And necessarily assuming that you have other interests other than computers. You made the degree sound like it wasn't financially draining. So I don't know how you're doing financially. I I don't know how you went to school, whether on loans or on scholarship. But that is one option, one of many, right? Right. An alternative to that would be to supplement your degree with your interests. Begin to dilute that hate that you feel with things that you like. Notice how I said like, not love, right? Because again, love and hate are very strong emotions. And I feel like, I feel as if folks who use love and hate can easily be (laughs) misguided and misinformed, easily. But I'm not making any judgments on how smart or how intelligent this person is. But it's as if something that you hate, it's as if you introduce something that you quote unquote love to something that you quote unquote hate, you then lose that I for what you love. It loses its it loses its brilliance. It loses its luster. You're say you'll say now, I don't know, if for whatever reason uh for the sake of argument, I hate guns, right? I hated I hated past tense. I hated guns, right? But then I would try to supplement that hate, that passionate hate for, I don't know, with knives. And I I understand. I get this as a very crude analogy. But I introduce knives to the equation. That association, however tangential, however tenuous, however thin, that association between knives and guns will influence each other. Now it's the hope that I don't I don't have this pure love, this pure image of knives where if they even touch a gun, like if I were abs- accidentally were to like toss or leave my gun on my desk and then I don't know take my knife out and lay it next to it and if they touch 
then I, I'll never see my knife the same way again, right? No, no, no. Take an interest that you can leverage and make profitable, create value from it, and roll it up in to your degree. You've gotten some technical training. You've gotten the training. And you've got the degree to prove it. You know how to program. And you know how to utilize information systems. So if we sat you down, went through your interests, identified whatever assets you have, and maximized those opportunities to leverage your degree, which is an asset in and of itself. It's meant to be an asset, right? It's not as useless as a social science or postmodern humanities, which is a just a huge blanket of, of uh, watered-down bullshit, right? I'm sure you know, liberal arts and whatnot. Yours is still somewhat technical. Yours is still somewhat logic-based. But I don't know. This could also be informed by your worldviews, your outlook on work, and your ethic toward it. That might come back to how you were raised what values you were instilled with. But ultimately, all of that can be changed. It's you who has to take the initiative. And you've taken the first step in identifying that you feel as if you're at a crossroads. Notice how I stopped saying dead end. You're at a crossroads right now. I don't know when you graduated. Another question I would ask, I don't know where you've applied and how many applications you've sent out to which organizations, right? Another question that I would ask. It's important that all this gets addressed in order to create a personalized recommendation, something for you to consider that might be feasible. That might be viable. That might require that you develop a couple, a couple of extra skills, a couple of additional skills that might require you to further develop in some key areas like social interaction, like public speaking, like sales, like motherfucking hustling for you to make your degree marketable, for you to make use of your degree. It's not useless. It's just a degree. It's an inanimate object, right? Just like those postmodern liberal arts degrees today, those folks are getting picked up by weird initiatives, weird corporate initiatives at some companies, quote unquote, tokenization. (laughs) They're just tokenizing weird Identities, really, they're weird. And that could be any color, any race, any ethnicity, anybody who who backs it is on some weird shit. They're not necessarily doing good. They're not necessarily doing right. They're not even necessarily being productive. They're just profiteering. It's a bubble. It's a bubble. And if there is no material benefit to it, which there isn't, it's just a bubble. It's just a bubble for the sake of what? Public image? For the sake of targeting a demographic? But it's up to you to take the initiative. Now you have to take on that corporate mindset. You, you don't want to stray so far from reality, then you have to realize the reality in which you exist, which is you have 
a computer science degree. What else do you need? What else do you do? What else interests you? What do you want from life? Otherwise, you only have that that other option. Otherwise, you will only continue having that other, other option. Don't put yourself through that. Don't put your career through that. However short or long-lived it is. I'm not even going to read any of the comments on this one. That's 30 minutes in and out. You can reach us on IG. That's at Corporate Cowboys with a Z. On the Patreon, you can subscribe to any of the tiers. Some of them actually give you the ability to ask questions and pose prompts for future episodes. Again, this comes back to corporate. Notice how I didn't say... And, and I didn't even ask if this person has a social life, if they go out, if they have friends, I don't know, a girlfriend, boyfriend. I don't, I don't ask any of that. What are you doing for yourself to improve yourself, to develop professionally? Because that will ultimately influence how you live personally. Unless you're born on a silk pillow with a silver spoon. If you want to shoot us a buck, shoot us a dollar. I mean, you could do that if you would like. This podcast, this operation is nonprofit. Any money that comes in, it's obviously going to go towards business expenses and legal fees. Um, and, um, yeah, I mean, if you want to send us something written, something typewritten, you can do that as well. That's PO box three, three, seven, two Rancho Cordova, California, nine, five, seven, four, one. You see, when you, when you look at it from a certain angle, this ideation it becomes a lot more than just disappointing. It ought to motivate you. You ought to be scared of the end. Don't race to get there. I mean, there's shortcuts. There's shortcuts to the end. <laughs> you just want to take the right ones. Go, go. Uh, <laughs> I forget what season it is, but the episode is called The First Half to Self Sabotage. I believe it was in uh, season four. I'll find it for you real quick. Season four. Season four. Was it season three? Season three. Season three. Season three. Mm -hmm. Was it season two? Nah. Maybe. Season two, episode 16. Season two, episode 16. The first half of self-sabotage. That's that's the climb. That's setting yourself up. (laughs) And you want to set yourself up successfully. All puns intended. (laughs) Have a nice one. I'll catch you next time.